and Rascals channel where we are your unofficial sponsors. Today we are at the Kohana Distillers and we're going to do a rum tour. So follow along and we're going to show you around. So very excited to show you folks around the property and then get you tasting on some rum. Just to give you some background of where we are on the island, to give you a sense of place, we are in Kunia, which is central Oahu. This is predominantly agriculture land out here. Uh, 3,000 acres of the land that we're standing on from 1906 to 2006 was the Belmonte Pineapple Plantation. When their 100 year lease came up in 2006, they decided not to renew and the state divided these acreages up to support smaller agricultural projects. So all of Del Monte's plantation workers used to live in these homes back here. <clears throat> it's 108 homes. It's the Cunia Farm Village. And now if you work in agriculture by any means, you can apply to live back there. It's all subsidized housing. They just renovated all 108 homes that are there. They're like real nice on the inside. Um, this was Del Monte's general store for those plantation workers. So this room that we're standing in here was the post office. <clears throat> Bathroom was Phil's barber shop. They had a grocer, a liquor store, commercial kitchen that they could order late lunch style food out of. We took this over in 2015 to make it our tasting room, which is right around the same time that we first started bottling. Um, Kohana, here at Kohana, we are a Hawaiian agricole rum distillery. So what agricole means is that, you know, when you see it on a bottle of rum, it means that that rum is made out of fresh pressed sugarcane juice, where 99% of the world's rum is going to be made out of molasses otherwise known as rum industrial. Molasses is the byproduct of producing sugar, so it's already been stripped out of a lot of its flavor and aroma. So if you've never had an agricole style rum, super funky, super aromatic. I think there's a lot of soul in these rums. Um, I'm studying wine to become a sommelier, and I think that with these rums, you can taste terroir or a sense of place of where these sugar canes were grown. It just makes something truly unique. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started on trying some uh, fresh pressed sugarcane juice to begin the tour. It's going to be important to remember some of the flavors and smells that you experience because it definitely translates to the rum that we'll be trying later. The varietal that I'm going to be trying for you or juicing for you guys right now is going to be called Lahi, which means delicate or fragile. This uh, sugarcane has a very thin rind on it that splits and cracks really easily. We also have some rum for you guys to try from this time. Good. 
Tastes like mango. I see that. It has tropical fruits in it yeah, for sure. It tastes good. Yeah. Real sweet. So we are gonna be outside in the cane garden just for a little bit. Here at Kohana, we're restoring 34 Hawaiian heirloom varietals of sugarcane, all of which can be traced back to the first Polynesian settlers. It is a new plant. It's one of the 27 things Hawaiians brought with them to the islands over a thousand years ago. So it's like one of the 27 things they wanted to be stuck in a bunch of deserted island with, islands with <laughs> to start new life, essentially. Some of the applications back then, the leaves were used to thatch the roofs of their houses. The juice was used in medicines, poisons. It was used to make tattoo ink. It was used in ceremonies. Uh, the rootstock is really thick. It's in the same family of grass as bamboo. And how they would grow a lot of their food back then were in something called lofi, so like wetland taro farms, kind of similar to rice paddies almost. So they would plant sugarcane all along their waterways and all that trenching to keep that all in place. The leaves, when you use it as mulch, attract the nitrogen-fixing bacteria that fixates nitrogen from the air into the soil. Super important uh, for hydrology in a lot of places, especially where there's mist, because it'll trap mist, and the water will eat off to keep the soil hydrated. That's just a few of them. And actually in the Hawaiian origin chant, it's called the Kumuliko. In the first or second stanza, the first plant that's referenced is Kalo as the older brother figure. It's the most famous canoe plant. The second yeah. plant that's referenced is Shuriko. So yeah. that important to their way of life, to their culture, or sustenance. Uh, cool. So some notable varieties. These are all different varieties out here. So it's a lot like grapes, a lot like wine, where even though it's all sugarcane, they all have very different flavors. Uh, this is going to be kea or kokea. It's named after this white waxy film on the outside of the sugarcane here. This was King Kamehameha's favorite varietal. So when he was uniting the islands, he planted this all along his war paths. And his soldiers would cut it down and chew on it as a quick source of energy. So they wouldn't have to stop marching as frequently. Uh, this is going to be our workhorse cane. It's what we grow the most out of. Really good yield of juice. Super clean flavor. Um, does really well. I mean, just yeah. really good. Is that the one we just tasted? Oh, that's actually locked mm -hmm. right here. It's what we just mm -hmm. tasted. So, um, but we will be trying yeah. some rum from this later as well. Yeah. So, we get to see so you can see that they're all different uh, colors. So some notable, other notable varietals. Uh, in Hawaiian culture, there's something called Kana Aloha, which is a ceremony of love. And there's three cane varietals that were a part of these ceremonies. One being papa'a here, which means burnt. It also means to hold fast. So Hawaiians didn't have marriage necessarily, but they did have lifelong partnerships. And this was used in a Hana Aloha ceremony to solidify that partnership, almost like a wedding would be. Uh, I believe it's the only purple leaf to cane in the world. Something like kea that we just saw will yield about 4,000 gallons per acre of juice. Papa'a will yield 700 about. So you can see how thin and wispy it is. Um, the flavor is insane, so even though it doesn't make sense like you know, economically to grow this, so much history here and the flavor is absolutely worth it. So we try to grow as much of this as we can. And it's very sinister looking, you know, but it's all about love, which I think is really cool. Yeah. This was used in a Hana Aloha ceremony to enchant a distant loved one that may not necessarily have loved you back. So flying bird being like Cupid's arrow, it's going to you know, enchant this loved one. Uh, these kahuna, these priests of Hana Aloha, would get a bowl of water and gently swirl their finger in it to create a vortex. And they would drop two ilima flowers, these two beautiful orange flowers inside. And if, if they never connected, the priests wouldn't carry out the ceremony. If they connected but split apart really quickly, it meant the spell wouldn't last. If they stayed connected, they would carry out the ceremony. And it was said to be used by a uh, by a mortal to get a goddess to fall in love with him in Hawaiian mythology. So the gods had to create Laukona, which is up there as the antidote king for this love spell. So long history here is, is the main part. The, char, the, the higher the char number, the more of this wood is going to be charred and just more of the, the wood sugars are going to be caramelized. So deeper, richer flavor you're going to get and different flavors as well. I've always wanted to tour Cooper Bridge. I feel like you know, this is kind of an under-talked-about skill here. These pieces of wood are all fit together so that the barrel breathes, but it doesn't leak. There's no adhesive used in this. All of this is held together by pressure of what's inside. Um, you don't want to use adhesive because you don't want whatever's inside to taste like glue. 
and these bands aren't even really fastened to the barrel at all. So something like this that hasn't been used to age anything in a while, you can see through the cracks. So if you put something inside, it would leak. So you'd have to soak this barrel in, a, in water for 24 to 48 hours to get it to swell up again, like a boat, you know? Uh, and when I say that, you know, it breathes, but it doesn't leak. So if we do have leaks, like what this used to be here, um, because we can't use any adhesive, the only thing we can use is beeswax to slow the leak down. And American oak specifically has a, pro a property in it that clots like blood, so it'll self-clot so the leak stops. Mm -hmm. Really, the, the, the beeswax is just to slow the leak down while it is clotting. Wow. And, and again, when I, when I say it breathes but doesn't leak, so what happens when it's hot, the barrels expand, and when it's cold, they contract. Because this room is in temperature controlled, they're often expanded in here. Um, so we lose about 10% annually to angel share, which is evaporation. That's actually what you're, what, one of the things you're smelling in here, that sweetness that you're smelling is that evaporation, as well as the oak. Um, why we're okay with that loss, if you go to somewhere that's cold or climate controlled, they might lose one to 3% annually. Um, why we're okay with that though, is because it's hot in here, the rum in the cast is maturing a lot faster. So we only age for two to three years. Uh, when I say two to three years, we don't have a cookie cutter timeline. Right around that two year mark, our distillers start actively tasting each barrel. And when they feel like they're all hitting their prime is when they decide to bottle. So very hands-on approach. That's what these chalk numbers are gonna be here for, is essentially a tracking number. These are made, all made out of oak. These barrels are made out of koa. Uh, very long history in Hawaii, it's a her heritage wood. Um, it was only used to make things for our alii or our chiefs. Now it's you know one of the most prized woods in the world. So with oak, to be a little bit general, it might come with some cigar boxiness, a lot of vanilla, or maybe some slight caramel or banana leaf, along with a lot of other things. Coal will leach this beautiful red color into the room. So when you hold the bottle up to the light, it looks like a ruby. It's beautiful. Uh, it also comes with very deep spiced notes like anise and cinnamon. It's one of the most unique bottles of rum that I've yet to try. Um, and I think Kohana is very important for the state of Hawaii because we don't have a ton of exportable products out of our state. So a distillery that's so focused on restoring these Hawaiian varietals of cane to make a bottle of rum that is exportable, that is winning awards. Like Kohana is the most important as far as a distillery in the world. And now taking it one step, let's hear the shit out of me. And well, I'm taking it one step further and aging in a wood that's so important to find heritage. I think it's really an important step um, mm -hmm. awesome. yeah. for the state mm -hmm. going forward. Cool. cool. So um, we harvest on about a quarter acre of land a day, which is maybe like one and a half times the size of this area that we just walked through to get here. Right now, all the harvesting is done by hand. So if you can imagine what a field of that of sugarcane looks like, it's a really tough job. Um, that stuff gets stuck in your skin like fiberglass too. We do all the juicing in the field so that the sugar cane doesn't have time to dry out because again, we're going for yield of juice. We don't want to lose too much of that juice. Um, and some of these canes, as soon as you cut them down, you can see them pretty aggressively dripping juice out of the bottom. Um, on a quarter acre of land, we're yielding about a thousand gallons of juice. We're transporting them in big bubbles like this and bringing them up to the distillery where we start pumping it into our fermentation tanks, which are all along the back wall. That's where we introduce yeast. That's where our fermentation process begins. Uh, we ferment for three to five days here. So at that point, it's turning into a sugarcane wine or a distiller's beer. Or in Indonesia, it's called basi, and they just drink that. Uh, we ferment dry, which means on the last day, there's no sweetness left in that sugarcane wine. Super bitter, super sour kind of spritzy and spunky, like a kombucha almost. Um, at that point, it's about eight to 9% alcohol by volume. Fermentation is super important. It's where all the alcohol is created. It's also where all the flavor is created. Distillation is essentially the separation of things. Um, so from there, from the fermentation tanks, we're pumping it into this big pot still here on the left that works a lot like an electric tea kettle. It forms a steam jacket on the bottom that heats that sugarcane wine up to 180 degrees. As that wine is, is heating up and things are vaporizing at different temperatures, those vapors are then transferred to these two column stills here, these two copper towers. Each one of those windows has a copper plate in it that the vapors are having to fight through to get all the way to the top. 
and then transferred to this condenser tube on the right that's pumped with really cold water that turns that vapor back into a liquid. First thing to come out as a liquid is going to be called four shots. Very high in methanol, so it's not good for you to drink, you'll go blind. But great for sanitation. So you see us in our tasting room spraying a spray bottle that smells like our rum and we clean our surfaces with it. That's all going to be four shots coming out of the still here. Hand sanitizer is a little bit different, but it's fantastic for surface cleaner. Then comes your heads, your hearts, and your tails. So your heads and your tails, not really the profile or the flavor profile or the quality that we're going for. So we set that on the side to try to read the still again later. Uh, the hearts is the middle of it. That's what our rum is made out of. It's about 10% of that original 1,000 gallons of sugarcane juice. So roughly on a quarter acre of land, we're yielding about 600 bottles of that. That's my spiel for that. So here we run a hybrid still or a hybrid distillery. It's very American to have pot still and column still in the same operation. The pot still allows us to keep a lot of the body and the flavor in the rum, where the column still allows us to get up to a higher proof, as well as more contact with copper. So you see distilleries use copper because it's a living metal. So one of its properties is it removes sulfates from the distillate. So if we didn't use copper, the rum would taste like metal, essentially. So that's why you see. So our first uh, 15 acres of land is on the other side of this tree line here. That was our first little plot. We have 10 acres down the road, another 212 acres up in Haleiwa, and 50 acres in Wailua. Um, so I think what's really cool right now is Kohana is kind of starting this process of like figuring out which best, which land, plots of land grow the best varietals of cane. You know, the stuff that's coming from the North Shore is going to have way more salinic, salty characteristics, where, you know, these might have different characteristics. So the angle that the sun hits these canes and how this like cool mist comes in the morning and dissipates by the afternoon but comes back at, in the evening, the temperature change, it all affects the flavor of something soil type. Um, so I think that like really fine-tuning that is going to be a really cool process to experience over the next few years, or I mean forever really. Um, and what I really, really think that makes Kohana very unique is there's not a lot of distilleries in the world that grow what they distill. So we don't buy sugarcane from anybody. We don't buy rum to blend into our rums. All of, this, all of what we do is done in-house. And I think that total knowledge and care and respect for these grasses from grass to glass really will speak volumes when we start tasting the rum in a little bit. Um, it's why I really wanted to work and makes me proud to be here. So. These two are 1,200 gallons and the other four are 700 gallons. We're upgrading to 4,000 gallon tanks. We're going from harvesting on 30 acres of land to almost 300 over the course of the next year and a half. Whoa. So hopefully you guys will be seeing Kohana more and more. You know? Uh, you can see that these fermentation tanks are coming from a company called Latina. So it's very good luck for distillers to name their tanks so everyone has a photo of a famous Tina on it. Uh, and all these stills are going to be upgraded. Our boiler that heats all of this up. Um, so that's our it's 200 gallon propane tank back here. The new boiler that's coming in is going to burn 55 gallons of propane an hour. So we're, we're really making a big push to be more accessible here, as well as to be able to share with everyone. Do you sell only here, or do you sell like stores? So, I mean, we do, we're in a lot of, pretty much every major bar program, like ABC store, Costco, um, Foodland, stuff like that. Um, we, make a, we make enough rum to supply our state, and we have a small distribution to California, New York, and Texas or Florida, I believe. So the idea is to be more accessible to everybody. Okay. It takes time to get there. It does. I mean, they really have to fine tune the process, really. And, and, and no, one, no one's growing, you know, these sugar canes commercially. So that was a huge learning curve on how to actually farm these things. Yeah. There's not a lot of information on them. These varietals were all lost for a really long time, too. So it took us seven years to complete this collection of cane that we have now. And then to also fine tune the ag side of it has been a huge mission to go from 30. We started off with a quarter acre. And now we're all at over 300, so.
trying, or the first two rums that we're going to be trying, are both bottles of Kea. Kea means white in Hawaiian, so all of our white, unaged rums are going to be called Kea. Um, these rums are rested in stainless steel for 60 to 90 days. Resting it is a lot like when you cook stew. The first day that you cook it, it's good. The second or third day after you've left it in the refrigerator and those flavors incorporate themselves into each other, it's even better. Um, these, both these bottles of rum are made the exact same way from one another. The only difference is that they're coming from two different varietals of sugar cane. So on the side of every bottle, you'll see the varietal staff as well as the harvest date. So the first one we're going to be trying is called Kokea, which was King Kamehameha's favorite. The second one that we're going to be trying is called Laki which is the juice that you guys tried um, before we went out on the tour. The main lesson here is you get to see how uh, two different canes make two very different tasting rums. These are going to be 40% alcohol by volume. I think that they're super cool to sip on meat because they're so flavorful and aromatic already. But if you're going to be making these into cocktails, I suggest something like a classic daiquiri or something that's really going to enhance the flavor of these rather than um, if you've never done a high proof spirits tasting before, because we're starting off with something that's 40% alcohol by volume, you want to be way more gentle in the way you smell these compared to like a wine or a beer tasting. Um, so that alcohol can really neutralize your palate. So the first one we'll be trying is Tokea. The second one we'll be trying is Lahi. The next thing that we're going to try is called coho, which means to be selected or to be chosen in wine. So this is our barrel select. We take our white rums and we age them in American oak for two to three years. This bottling of coho specifically was a year and a half in a new barrel, a year and a half in a used barrel. Mm. Um, this varietal is going to be called Pacabelli. So if you turn around, it's that reddish green striped cane on the bottom of this photograph here. This is, yeah, that one. 45% uh, alcohol by volume, makes a great sipper, great rum old fashions. Um, the combination of these two rums make fantastic Mai Tais. And uh, the lesson here, so these were this, these two were a lesson on uh, two different varietals make two different rums. This is a lesson on what oak and age does to our spirit, which is kind of what it does to everything else. So, your, the flavor and the color that it picks up is either from the Pacabelli sugar cane or from the barrel aging process. And you'll see that it has a roundness to it. So with oak and aging again, it'll round out some of the edges that you might find um, in these rums. And even though it's higher proof, it might be perceived as being a little bit smoother. So we don't add coloring or flavoring to this at all. And if you like bourbons, this might be a little bit more familiar because of that oakiness. How's your gelato? Um, it's good. I got a fish cream mango. All right. Here's some mango. Evan, what kind of chicken? You got chocolate. Chocolate. So some of the other age stuff that we do at Kohana, this is the bottle of koa up here, so you can see that beautiful red color that it has. Um, that's the stuff that's aged in the koa wood barrels. Something else that we have um, is the kila, which means strength in Hawaiian. So this is our cast strength. It's coming in at 60.1%. The whole time it's been aged was three years in an ex bourbon barrel. Wow. So, so you see how we can do a lot of different things. Something can be a new oak the whole time, or go from new oak to bourbon, or from bourbon to, or from new oak to like something that's been in a sherry cast. So there's a lot of mix and matching that we can go there, along with the variety. So the next thing that we're going to be trying is called coco leco, which means chocolate and wine. This is our cacao honey rum liqueur. We take 300 pounds of raw cacao nibs and we steep it in our rum for one month. We then send the nibs back to Manoa Chocolate Company and they make our rum soaked chocolate bars for us. Or like these cacao nibs or stuff like that. Uh, because cacao is naturally a little bit bitter, we're also adding some honey into this from Manoa Honey Company, which is right up the road. So this is a collaboration of three different farms in Hawaii on a, on a bottle of something, which I think is really cool. This is 30% alcohol by volume. 
I think this is way more lighthearted and playful, like way more just for pure enjoyment. I think it goes great on a scoop of vanilla ice cream or in your coffee or in an espresso martini, which is a really hot cocktail right now, or just as an after dinner sipper to catch up with friends on a Sunday night. Uh, I really like that it's cacao because you'll see how much more different you get out of it than just chocolate. So the last thing that we're going to be trying, I have some barrel aged honey for you folks. These are going to be for your spoons here. Um, so this honey is coming from Manoa Honey Company, which is right up the road again. It's been barrel aged in a rum barrel for one month. And honey is a natural dehydrator, so it absorbs a lot of the essence of the rum and the oak out of the barrel. So. It's, a, it's a good price. It's $40 for the big bottle and $30 for the small bottle. Yeah. This is the honey they have. Yeah. 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 It's not the honey that we use in the Coca-Leca, but it's from the same company. So we just age this in a barrel. All right. Uh huh. So we shipped to 21 states. You can find all that information on our website and stuff like that about what states we do. Okay. And then, so we do, yeah, you can order everything online in the online shop. Okay. Um, and if we do ship, then we can ship. Okay. Um, we ship to every state if it's non-alcoholic though. So okay. the states that we don't, if they want to try the honey or like merchandise or anything like right. that. Yeah.
right, so we just finished the rum tour. Um, it was super informational. It was so much fun. I highly recommend doing this tour if you're in the area. Um, as you can see, it's a little rainy, a little chilly today, so I got some nice merchandise from the store. Um, our tour guide was super awesome, and he actually has a YouTube channel, so definitely check him out. His YouTube channel name is Chuck Barulla Uncorked. Um, so check him out, and thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned next week for more exciting adventures, because we want you to be in the know everywhere we go. Like, share, subscribe to our channel. No, come and you welcome.